unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth, and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language. But the word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the word. Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank thank you that you do great and mighty things in our lives. We thank you that no man can do what you do in our lives. And Father, we receive it as a knowledge and experience for our lives. We thank you that it's working in each and every individual in this place. The consciousness that you are at work in their lives is our reality. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You may have your seats in the presence of God. Praise the Lord. As you see, it's quite obvious that Apostle Grace is not physically here. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. But I have good news for you. Apostle Grace is in the United States of America. And God is doing great and mighty things. Amen. Amen. They had a wonderful service yesterday. The lame were walking. The word was powerful. Praise the Lord. Let me tell you. This world is ours. Amen. Amen. And I want at this moment, I want to just all of us to give a shout to all those on live stream. Just all those attending Panera on live stream. Look into the cameras and wave at them. Wave at them all over the world. But today especially, I want to inform you that Apostle Grace himself, Lubega, is on live stream. So wave at him. Tell him you love him. (laughs) Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. They are watching. They are having a great time. We thank God he will be back very soon. Amen. Amen. Uh, They are very reliable gentlemen who have been left behind. The pastors are here. The elders are here. So we are safe. Amen. 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 I was looking at, at, at the live stream, I mean, not the live stream, I was looking at uh, the repeat of last week as it was being shown. I, I said, oh my God. How many in this place feel overwhelmed? Overwhelmed. I'm going to explain that. <laughs> I'm about to explain. How many of you feel overwhelmed beyond your ability? After watching and being here last week. Are there any people? Are there any people? What does the scripture say? What does the scripture say? What does it say? It says, from the end of the earth will I cry unto thee, when my heart is overwhelmed. Praise the Lord. Lead me to a rock that is higher than I. Praise the Lord. How many of you are blessed? I was extremely blessed. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We thank God for the ministry of the word. We thank you God for the time we're in this day. Uh, it's a wonderful time. We're in a time where we, we are seeing great and mighty things only. Praise the Lord. We're in a time, listen, we're in a time where we are seeing only great and mighty. And I feel in the time we're in, we're in a time where the church is, is it's not just imagine. Praise the Lord. But the true understanding that we are above all power and principality. Listen, it's going to become a true reality and an absolute truth in this world today. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I feel, I feel it in my spirit. The men of God agree with me and many of you agree with me. We are getting in a time where, I mean, there were days, there were days where you talk, when you talked about church, maybe because of what you understood, you're like, mm, you know. But now, it, it's 
church is the thing. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So today, um, kindly open your Bibles to Psalms 107, verse 20. Psalms 107, verse 20. Are we there? Let's start from 17. Can you read? Listen, don't fear. You're not a fool. Praise the Lord. You know that some people are like scared. Like, they may say something they know. Praise. No, no, no. Can you read? Fools. Ah? Uh, praise the Lord. Next line. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Who was that word sent to? And Lord Jesus, Lord, you are not a fool. You are not. We are sure. There is no fool here. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's read it again. Maybe amplified version. Amplified version. Let's try amplified. Of their transgression. Praise the Lord. Uh Uh-huh. Listen. The Bible says they love every kind of food and they draw nearer to death. Are you seeing seeing the characteristic of a fool? Praise the Lord. The Bible says they love every kind of food. Every, every kind. It means the food is not the problem. But the challenge is every kind of food. Every, every kind of food. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Next line. In their trouble. Listen, it means even the glory of being delivered out of, it's just not glory. Are you getting me? Being delivered out of a distress is not actually glory for the church. Are, are you understanding me? That's, that's, the patient endurance, are you getting me? Of God, are you getting me? To fools. Then you say, oh God, are you getting me? And then he delivers them out of their trouble. You see, I love the word. Me, listen, for me this is how it cuts me. And this is how I get in line. Now, there, there's a Christian. Are you getting me? His testimony is, oh, I, I was broke. Are you getting me? And then God took me out. You've never had that on that pulpit, on this pulpit. Praise the Lord. Because that's, that's not testimony. Praise the Lord. I was, I was like this. Are you getting me? Then I came out. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The Bible says because of their transgression. It's their doing. He, it's not me. It's the psalmist. Praise the Lord. He says because of their transgression. Because of their transgression. It's never the Lord's doing that a man can transgress. It's, it's, listen, it's because of their transgression. It means, with this knowledge, we have started realizing and we have come to the truth and realized that everything pertaining our lives is our business. That's a big responsibility for any child of God. Huge responsibility. Everything that comes my way becomes my business. Deep calleth unto, deep calleth unto, when you're a deep guy, deep things come your way. Praise the Lord. When you're a rich man, rich things come your way. Are you getting me? When you're a loaded man, loadedness comes your way. Are you getting me? Are you getting me? And that's the word of God. Now listen. Listen. Let's go back to the scripture. Let's go back to the scripture. Back, back. Just, just 19. I want you to understand me. So that no one thinks. Praise the Lord. That I'm trying to attack anyone. It's just the word putting us. You see the beauty of the word. eh? Let me tell you something. When the Bible says that the word of God is profitable. Are you getting me? It's profitable. It's it's profitable. It means the word of God is for me. The word of God can never be against me. Why? Because I am begotten of the very word. Are you getting me? I, I am begotten of the word. When the word of God is saying I'm great. Are you getting me? That's for me. Praise the Lord. It means... You learn the principle. The word can never be against you if you're born again. 
There are some people, you preach a hard someone, they can't greet you. They will pass the other side. I remember that when I just met Apostle Grace, some days he used to preach some hard, you know, some hard someone. You know, someone where it's surgery, you, it's like, it's like you sit, are you getting me? It's like, he says, now sit there, now let me operate, praise the Lord. And you lay there, you know guys who are, when they're operating, you're not even thinking, right? They, 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 they make sure they go to sleep. They kill your senses, praise the Lord. They kill your emotion. Is it called morphine? What do they use? It's called what? It's called what? I know what? Okay. Now listen, when the word comes in that manner, make sure you're dead. You're not emotion. Are you getting me? You, let me tell you, when the word comes, let me tell you, you cannot grow until you get to that level. Because the word of God becomes your standard. It becomes your standard. It becomes your standard. I don't know how you get me. It means, if I wanted to measure myself, I can only measure myself only according to the degree of truth that I'm exposed to. That's all. That's all. That's why, listen, some of you for a long time have listened to us and you have said they are, they are crazy. But if you have been here long enough, you have realized that many of those things that we have said are crazy have come to pass. <laughs> they have come to pass. And listen, if you have been here for a while, you know that when I say something now, it will come to pass, however crazy it sounds. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Because listen, listen. Many people, many, now let me tell you what the problem is. Many people receive the word of God as mere men. You see, you, you receive the word as a human being. That's the problem. You, you're a human being receiving God. The Bible says flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. It means you have no business with the realm of God. It means if you want to have business with the realm of God, you've got to ginomai, are you getting me? To become, are you getting me? Of the God kind, to receive of God. You cannot receive. You see, these two things, flesh, spirit, those two things. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. That which is born, it means it comes from the realm of the, of the flesh, is flesh. You get me? Now, if you want to receive spiritual things, you've, you can't be flesh. You understand me? If you want to receive of spiritual things, you cannot receive of spiritual things as a human being. Paul says, listen, Paul, what Paul says? Paul says, he says, the spirit which raised Christ from the dead. He says, if the spirit which raised Christ from the dead dwells in you. <laughs> it's the weekend. He says, e -I -R. He says, ah. He said, listen, I, I imagine Paul. Let's, let's go to the previous verse. You know, I, I imagine the meditation of the spirit. Because the Bible says the prophets of old spake as they were inspired of the Holy Ghost. It means he was in the realm of the spirit. Praise the Lord. And, this, and if Christ be in you, the body is dead. Give it to, because of sin. Amplified, amplified does it better. Amplified does it better. I'll show you why. Amplified does it better. He says, but if Christ lives in you, then although your natural body is dead. Uh, now hear me. Hear me. Listen to what Amplified does. He says, but if Christ lives in you, praise the Lord. He says, then although your natural body is dead by reason of sin and guilt. Now listen, the spirit is alive. Hear me, hear me, hear me, hear me, hear me. There are people who say, you see, my circumstances. You see, Papa, I'm weak. You see? Now listen to what Amplified says. He says, but if Christ lives, is that true? Is that a truth infallible? Does Christ live in you? Does Christ live in you? Now Paul gives us the analogy. He says, he says, although your natural body be dead by reason of sin and guilt, that's not the problem. Listen, your body can mean, it's beyond your physical, your physical, it's, it's beyond this. It can be your circumstances. He says, if Christ lives in you, he says, even though those circumstances are dead by reason. You see, the problem with Christians, are you getting me? They look at their body, they look at circumstances around them and conclude those to be their life. 
Yet I am a sata. You understand me? But that's not true. That's not true. He says, but if Christ lives in you, then although your natural body is dead by reason of sin and guilt, he says the spirit is alive because of the righteousness that he imputes to you. He's trying to say, hey, wait a minute, don't worry, don't worry. Yes, your body may be funny by reason of that. Okay? But the spirit in you is alive. <laughs> Are you getting me? He said, don't worry. Don't worry. Listen, Jesus Christ took on the sin of the world. That was not the issue. The spirit was alive. That was not the problem. I don't care. Eh? I don't care what's around you. Are you getting me? Even though your husband dies now. But it's okay. The spirit in you is alive. Even though your business goes down. Uh, that's not the problem. The spirit in you is alive. Paul says that spirit raised Christ from the dead. Now, that's why for some of us, we, I, I don't have bad times. Me, I don't have. Because the spirit is alive. Me, I don't have. I don't have. If you have known me for many years, for years, I don't speak. I cannot speak an idle word. I can't say that we're in trouble. You understand? Things are hard. I can't. Because, listen, irrespective of what's around us, the spirit is alive. Are you getting me? The spirit is alive. It's alive. It's alive. It's alive. Your woman, your wife, your husband slaps you. The spirit is alive. He slaps you. You say, man, that hurt. But he says, uh, you say, tell him I'm alive. What did you say? He, he, you just, I just slapped you and you said you are alive. Let me tell you that. You guys. Let me tell you. Recently, I think it was towards... Uh, <laughs> I think into this year, I was doing business at, at work. And of course, I, uh, my proposal was the best. I deserve the business. I give it to this guy. I make the proposal. I was the best. And the guy says, yes, I will take your business. But you have to return something. Are you getting me? He wanted me, the man of God, he didn't know who I was, by the way. He wanted me to bribe him. Now, this, let me tell you, some of you are praying when we need to fight corruption. We, we need to fight this corruption in this world. Like in Uganda especially, where we are ranked what? That nonsense. Who told you we are ranked? Who told you we are ranked? Who said we are ranked? Eh? We are behind over which country? Who told you? Listen, those are human statistics. Human, human, human statistics. I hear what? What? Uganda is one of the most corrupt. That's nonsense. That's nonsense. That's nonsense. I looked at the guy. guy I, told him, I told him, sir, I, I think you don't know me. Not that, not that I am hurry. I didn't tell him I'm hurry. Me, I don't. Don't. I didn't tell him, don't. I won't give you money. I don't know. No, I told him, wait. I told him, wait a minute. I told him, wait, let me help you understand something, sir. That business, I told him. It, it's only to give me. I told him, that business is mine. Yeah. Can I repeat the sentence? Because my source is God. Are you getting me? Yeah. He thinks because he has to sign and write an email and say we have awarded you the business. He thinks he's the, he's the one who gives me business. I told him, sir, wait a minute, sir. That business is mine. Now when I say that business is mine, I didn't go on to explain anything. I didn't threaten the guy. I just said, that business. In my, I said, this guy is joking. The next day I saw the guy sending email. He had already awarded it. Because I knew. You see, the problem is not, it's not the guy awarded. It's not the guy awarded. Wait, wait, let me tell you, no man can give you business. You know, corruption is hard. No. Listen, men don't give us business. They don't. Tell a guy, that business is mine, whether you want it or not, and walk away. You know, let me tell you, sometimes, sometimes, you need to prove God for yourself, if he's God. You, we need, listen, we need to get to a place. Let me tell you. The guy sends me business to this day. From, from that time, he has sent me over like four businesses. Well, now we are in April. Four. And I have not given him any money. Because I know. Hey, I know my source. 
He, let me tell you. He, listen, that guy, that guy, that, that's what I'm trying to tell you. There is no circumstance. There is no man, my right, enemy, that is your source. There's no man. The Bible says, you little children, you are of God. It means everything about you hails from God. You, you are of God. You know, you have to have that. You, you are of God. When you get into your office, you, you are of God. You, that's, that's, listen, that, that in its own self carries an atmosphere and a mind to him. Because what people don't know, what most people don't know, is that when you say such statements in the realm of the spirit, the guy starts imagining, how, why is he the president's son? The guy starts thinking, huh, maybe it's, you know, he starts thinking. I don't know what happens, but listen, listen, there's, a, there's, a, there's something, the Bible says we are written epistles, known and read. Now, for me, I don't need to tell him, he'll read. He says, Aya, when a guy, I love you, come beggar. You know, that's the problem. But you know, the problem is, the problem why some of you cannot walk in, those, in, those, in that mind is because you think you are a man. You think you are a man. You think you are a human being from Kamocha. You see, that guy says, you know where, where I come from, Kamocha. And even he says, yeah, Kamocha. Yes, Kamocha. You know, he's thinking Kamocha. The, you know, the principality of Kamocha is in his mind. He starts meditating. Those book shops, I hear me. Those book, that, the, 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 the prince of the air in Kamocha, I hear me, takes over. Yeah, for us, we are, here, let me tell you. We are from Zion. Are you getting me? Let me tell you. Let me tell you. You have that kind of thing and you're white. And that guy sleeps in your bed with that mindset. With that mind. Let me tell you, I'm not talking things I don't know. There's a woman who came to my office about three years ago, two years ago, and she was telling me about the husband, that he was messed up. He's cheating on me, he's beating his wife, everything. Are you getting me? You know all those things. I said when they're saying it, there's a way they add. Eh? Pastor, you don't understand. You understand? You even add that kind of thing. You know? I listen. I listen. You know sometimes you've got to be meek. Are you getting me? I, you have to wait. I know the answer already, but I have to wait for this. You understand? I know. I know. I just shared a few scriptures with us. I, I shared the word. I just, I just, I just illuminated that spirit. I, illumination. I just, I just, I just released light. She, she called me early in the morning. Can you imagine? He called from Karamoja. He apologized. <laughs> he says he's coming back. He says he's going to pay school fees for the children. Listen, they never talk, we, he, he ne- I never talked to him. Neither did she talk to him. But because the word of God got into her spirit, there was a reaction that happened from Karamoja. You guys. You guys. Karamoja. There's a guy in Karamoja. He was uncomfortable. He was like, let me call my wife. Let me just call. Why? Because the light... The, the light of God, are you getting me? Got into our spirit. Listen, the Bible says that your word is a lamp unto my feet. You know when the word becomes a lamp unto your feet, you know where to take them. You know. You know the next step. You know. He says your word is a lamp unto my feet. It means I know. The Bible says the steps of a righteous man are ordered of the Lord. I know how to move. Are you getting me? In your marriage, you just know how to. The Bible says, it's a light unto my path. It means I know where I'm going. You see, the future is not a mystery anymore to us. You guys, this, this has to be your synthesis. This has to be your reasoning. These are, these are things you need to, listen, you need to spend hours crying about this. Oh my God. I know. I know who I am. Can you imagine? You spend hours in tears in the presence of God. I know who I am. But some of you cry for who you are, for your problems. You spend, listen, some people spend hours and hours and hours and hours wasting time in the flesh. It means, what, listen, you're crying for yourself. You have never cried for, have you ever wept for souls? Have you ever wept that people are not giving their life to Christ? Have you ever wept? Have, listen, have you ever said, oh my God, people need to give their lives to Christ? Have you, have you spent four hours? Hey? 
Have you ever spent four hours, child of God, weeping that many to receive Jesus Christ? <laughs> oh my God, can you imagine? I want to be like Pastor Zach. <laughs> no. Listen. 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 That's what people are. Can you imagine? Someone, can you imagine this? The other woman is progressing. I'm not. You're there. Two hours. You're stressed. Let me tell you, that's the life of human beings. That's for human beings. He that is born of God, the Bible says, is above. You know, your beginning line, you are above. You know, the moment you, the moment you, begin, you, say, the moment you come into this world, you are above all things. You, you are not high, like Papa says. You are above. You see, when we are preaching the word, I'm preaching to men who are above. Listen, the guys who are distressed and they brought them out, that's not you. That's Old Testament. The Bible says he sent his word. Are you getting me? And healed them all. And, was, and delivered them from their destructions. Now, it means a man that has received the word, listen, is delivered from all destruction. You guys, you guys, we need to get born again. If you are not. Listen, when, when you're born or begotten of the word, it means your nature is the word. Your beginning is the word. The Bible says, in the beginning was the word. In the beginning was God. That's how you begin your life. But many people, you, the questions people ask us is, how do I start? You see, I can tell you how, but listen, I first need to reveal to you who you are. Because if I reveal to you who you are, you may stop asking me how. You, you, see, you see, someone asks you, as though they are not born again. How do I come out of this? The word of God says you are above. You guys, we need to be true to the word. It means, asking how to come out. We need to start from the reality. Are you getting me? That that's your body. That's a circumstance. But the spirit of God in you is alive. It means, when I am speaking to you, I am speaking to an exalted man. You see, now counseling has begun. Ah, it means, help us understand. Counseling has begun. When I'm counseling a child of God, I have begun from telling you, listen, child of God, you are above all things. You are above. You are above. You are above all things. You are above. Before you go to work, listen, businesses are coming in. We don't go to work, so that business comes. Ah, when, when you go to work, you just affirm. Are you getting me? You are, listen, this is the life of grace. Go and listen, listen. We don't do anything with our physical body. Because we prevail with God first. Are you getting me? We prevail with God first and win with the world. Are you getting me? We prevail with God first and win with the world. It means if I have not walked anywhere in the realm of the spirit, I am wasting time, child of God. You're wasting time. Listen, listen, when the Bible says the steps of, listen, this, when the Bible says the steps of a good man are ordered of the Lord, the Bible says a good man, right? Are you getting me? It means, listen, before you walk, are you getting me? God has ordered. The first place of understanding comes when you understand that my steps are ordered of the Lord. Do you understand me? They are ordered of the Lord. I mean, listen, I, some of us in this life, We've had, I've had the blessed privilege of certain things have started happening after I've had this understanding. Listen, it becomes so easy. The other day I was looking at my children's reports, man. They were, it was too excellent. Are you getting me? I was like, I went to their classes to see teachers were just giving only positive comments. Like, these kids are bright. Are you getting me? I was like, yeah, you're right. This one, you're right. Are you getting me? This, you, I was like, you're right. I looked at my wife like this. I'm like, this is boring. As in, everything was excellent. You guys. Because, listen, listen, listen. Before Jeremiah was born, I was... Listen. It, he's the first fruit of pastors. The first guy that came out of my loins. Yeah. The first and the best. Caro and blah, 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 whatever comes, can only be holy. This is my mind. 
I remember the first time I took him to school. A, a, a teacher gave me a funny report the first time. I, I tore the report. I said, this is wrong. I tore it physically. I said, no. I just tore and put it there. I get it. From that day, the realm of reports understood me. He knows. He, he knows. Now, there's someone, you're in here, you're going to bring your kid that we pray for your kid. He's not passing. Are you getting me? They, they have to pass. They've got to excel. They've got to excel. They've got to excel. You see, what happens is we want these simple things to be said so that you concentrate on the real things. We, we want people to wake up thinking about souls. Are you getting me? But you said, you find a man born of the Spirit. Think about how his son, where he will get fees, where he shall go. Are you getting me? How is. No, 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 no. Before they were born. And let me tell you, child of God, I have good news for you. Even though you came into this mind, listen, and you already had children, now you can redeem the time. You, now. Now. God is going to start raising dead bodies. Not because you're praised. Because you're not too much. You're not too much that you're like, ah, ah. Guy, come here, two years ago, come here, come here. Because you, there's, there's too much in you. Not because, no, you went to a grave. Ah. Because there's too much. That guy probably needs to finish his purpose. No, I, I'm serious. Now, when I said that, it became sound doctrine. Some guy is waiting, is there, but where is it recorded? No. It became some... I, I remember they told me the story of, 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 of the great man of God, the general of faith. Smith Wigglesworth. He was stressed. He went to pray for this guy. The guy was being stubborn. He was not responding. You see, the guy was... He, he's like, he, he laid hands on the guy. The guy is not responding. The man is disturbed. He left. They said, you know, Smith, you need to go back. He went back to his house. Because the guy was disturbing him. He was not responding. He went to his house. After a few hours, they called him and said, Smith, the gentleman you have prayed for has passed away. Oh, the guy ran back. Are you getting me? He ran back, entered the room. Are you getting me? Grabbed the dead body and said, now you will not disturb me. Like, I got you. Are you getting me? I got you. You know, you know, that one, it's not in the scripture. It's not, it's nowhere. It's nowhere in the scripture. It's nowhere in the scripture. And the fellow came back to life. The problem was that fellow was disturbing Smith's faith. That's why I tell you in the name of Jesus, some things have to die. That they may come to life. Are you getting me? There are things about you that have to die. Eh? There are some, eh? There is a thing that first has to die. And then God brings up the, the real thing. Are you getting me? There is a purging. Listen, God needs to do in some of your lives. Are you getting me? There are some things you're, so, you're holding on to as though, as though it's your life. Are you getting me? Paul made a statement. He says, why do you hold your life so dear to yourself? There are people, who, they, they hold their life so dear to themselves. So dear. I remember I was going to preach and, and my wife called me and said, uh, the kids are not well. I said, what? I asked her, who said? She said, she said, I've also been called the maid. I said, what? The maid? I just hung up. Are you getting me? And I went for ministry. I came back, they were running to me. Daddy, I said, what, what was this madness? Are you getting me? You, 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 you've got to, listen, You've got to get to levels. No, my wife knows me very well when it comes to these issues. We, there is no compromise. We agreed that there are some things. Listen, they are my kids. In, listen, I am the leader of faith. Are you getting me? I, I, I lead. Listen, I'm the high priest. Nothing happens. Are you getting me? Until I say yes. You guys. You guys. Nothing. Spiritual leader. That's where we begin from at home. Spiritual leader. There's no compromise. There's no compromise. Listen, we know too much. Tell your neighbor, I know too much. Are you getting me? The Bible says this knowledge preserves you. 
There's a preservation. Are you getting me? Allotted to them who know. Because knowledge is not having information. Knowledge is being one with God. Are you getting me? Knowledge means you and God are intertwined. So when the Bible says that the knowledge preserves, eh? why are you preserved? Why? Because you're so one with God. That for you to die, he has to die. Child of God, the Bible says Jesus Christ is alive right now. You know, you have to get so intertwined with truth. Are you getting me? That the devil has to look at you and say, Is that Jesus? Oh, Jesus. Are you getting me? No, it's true. It's true. It's true. Sometimes I see, I see people like, who have a problem. They have a problem with me and oh, I'm sure you all have this issue. They, I ever seen guys who have a problem with you but they have accepted. You know guys, that thing, you know this? You know there's a guy, you go to work and you tell them a statement and it comes to pass and they're like, this guy, you understand? Those ones, listen, that's how it is. We, we are taking this thing by force. Let me tell you. The spirit of God that is at work in us. Are you getting me? It's not, we don't negotiate with the world. Praise the Lord. We don't negotiate. I, I know it's wonderful to cast out devils, but that's to the, listen, to the world. These are the signs that follow them which believe. The Bible says they shall cast out devils. To who? To the church? Not to the unbelievers. I mean, a devil, le- legion, le- listen, the Bible says there was a man with legion. The Bible says men used to get ropes and, listen, tie him down, fight, struggle with the guy. And then the Bible says, and he saw Jesus Christ from afar. He, he he saw, men are trying to put him down. The Bible says he saw Jesus from afar. And the scriptures tell us, Markaya, he says, and he worshipped. He went down on him. He, he, listen, but go to, go to, go to verse, let's start from verse 3. Now I want to show you. Go for verse 1, Mark. And they came over. And to the other side of the sea, into the country of Gadanus. And when he was come out of the ship, when he was come out, the Lord, immediately there, there met him out of the tombs, a man with an unclean spirit. This guy was not born again. Unclean spirit. Praise the Lord. Who had his dwelling among the tombs. And no man, listen man, no man could bind him, no. Not with chains. It means this guy, there was no man who could, bar, listen, who could bind the guy with chains. It was not possible for men to put him down. Because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains. And the chains had been plucked asunder by him. And the fetters broken in pieces. Neither could any man tame him. Next slide. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and the tombs crying and cutting himself with stones. This was a guy who men never used to come. Listen, I, I imagine that area was people never used to go there. It was a no go. Now listen. But when he saw Jesus afar off, listen, he ran and worshipped him. It means, listen, listen, I, I, I don't know what happened to the devils. You see, this is the generation I'm talking about. Problems see you from far. Then they say, sir, sir, pass here. Are you getting me? Pass here. This is the way. This is the way. Here, here, okay, here. Yes, then here. Have you reached? Okay. You are at... Listen. But you have a co-wife with this mind. She will come on her knees and say, I want Jesus Christ. Are you getting me? I'm sorry. I didn't know it was you. I just... When I saw you and they told me you you are the wife, I just felt power going through my listen my body. I got on my knees. Let me tell you, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Listen, how can you read in the scriptures and you're a man of God and they tell you that Abraham actually lied? Abraham actually told guys, he says, my wife is fair. When Pharaoh sees my wife, they'll kill me. So because I don't, he even lied. The man of God lied. He says because she's fair. Let's do this. Let me say she's my sister. Let the king have her at least so that I am safe. 
Okay. The scriptures tell us the king was about to. You guys. You guys. You guys. You guys. I, I, I don't know whether you understand the kind of counseling classes we are going to have. Those issues are not there in ours. Are you getting me? They're not there. They're not there in the church. Those are for men who are not born again. They can sit on a woman who is not born again. When you become born of Rolando Robo Satabaka. Your kid brings a report and it's funny. You're a mother. You say, child of God, I never gave birth to anything. You tear it and say, that's not our report. You say, sit, you're clever. You guys, that's what the word of God does to you. It, it does, it, cre- it puts certain things, and that becomes your faith. It becomes your. I'm telling you about things we do and will do. Let me tell you, let me tell you. Paul said, he told Timothy, his son. He says, I know of no man who is of kindred spirit like me and my son, Timothy. He says, listen, wait a minute. He told him, wait, child. He says, give yourself. You don't, 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 don't come near the word. Don't study the word. I didn't tell him, just study. He didn't tell him, he said, he didn't say, ob- he didn't say observe. He said, give yourself. Are you getting me? Holy. Holy to the word. Holy. Not half. Holy. Your life becomes of the word. Holy. Holy to the word. You wife, give yourself wholly to the word. You man of God, give yourself wholly to the word. The Bible says, and, and they sh- the Bible says, meditate on these things. The scriptures are very clear. And they shall see. You. You, your profiting is not your business. It's for them to see. He says, meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them. That thy profiting may appear. It just narrows to men. It just appears. You don't need to explain yourself. And Jesus said we shall know them by their fruit. We know them. We know them. We know them by their fruit. Let me tell you, child of God, we have no excuses. We have too much. We have this word. He calls it the word of life. Praise the Lord. The word of life. Let's go back to Romans 8. I was at Romans 8. Hey. I have not yet begun preaching. Someone. How does Papa manage this someone? It's too much. It says, but, but Christ lives in you. And although your natural body is dead, by reason of sin and guilt, the spirit is alive because the righteousness that he imputes to you. Because of, bec- listen, listen. Because of the righteousness that he imputes to you. Are you hearing? Because of the righteousness that he imputes to you. Praise the Lord. Next line. And if the spirit of him who raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, then he who raised up Christ Jesus from the dead will also restore to life your motto, short-lived, perishable bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. He says, if he dwells in you, he shall give life. You see, listen, child of God. He shall give the way to your, the Bible says, to your motto bodies. It means the spirit of God in you starts releasing life to everything around you. Are you hearing me? The Spirit of God starts releasing to your children, are you hearing me? To your business, are you hearing me? To your shoes, are you hearing me? To your cars, your motor bodies. Motor bodies. Praise the Lord. Motor bodies. Next line. So then, now listen to Paul. I just love Paul. Now after that, he says, so then brethren, we are debtors, but not to the flesh. We, we, we've got no business with the flesh. We have no, I have no business with being a man. I'm not a debtor to being a human being. You see, human beings can feel sorry. Are you getting me? They can feel bad, but I feel bad. No, me, I have no debt there. Are you getting me? I've got the life of God in me. Are you getting me? The things that pertain my father are my business. Are you getting me? When he says that my will is to do that which the father sent me to do, it becomes your business. Are you getting me? He says, so then, brethren, we are not debtors, but to, not to the flesh. We are not obligated to our carnal nature. There's no obligation, child of God. Some people think they're obligated to be in canon. Yeah, but pastor, you understand? We are human. 
Eh, but you don't feel bad. I remember, where is Esther? Esther, where is Esther? Is Esther here? She's here. I was preaching in three, three years ago, maybe to St. Lawrence. After preaching, Esther was leading worship. I don't know, some in the choir. Then I'm preaching. Then I get into the car. It was like eight, nine. Then some funny girls came to me and says, Papa, Esther, Esther is not well. She's sick. Ay, ay, ay. They, they thought I was going to open my car and give her a lift. I just closed. I acted and I left. I get me. I, Esther, Esther knows too much for me to give her a lift that she's sick. And trust me, he, she's here. She knows. I left her. She even made me say, Papa, thank you. You know, she asked, thank you. Are you hearing me? I, I can't. I can't spoil like that. Are you hearing me? Esther has listened to too much words. I, I, I left her at St. Lawrence. Are you hearing me? I didn't even, I didn't even, even my conscience wasn't like, Bambi, pass Bambi. I left her. I didn't think about her. I'll say, thank you, Lord, for the students who are blessed. Thank you, Lord. But I left her. The Bible says we are not obligated to, to the carnal nature. I don't have an obligation. I don't have, I don't have, that's the word. And Esther loves me wherever I go, she comes. Are you getting me? She, she goes. When I have missions and I'm going, she says, Papa, can I come with you? She comes. That means if I didn't walk in love, she wouldn't be my friend today. Are you getting me? She loves me, by the way. When I call her, she first loves. That's the first thing. Because, listen, we're not obligated. You guys, the church, listen, of Jesus Christ, are you getting me? Is allowing too much carnality. Too much carnality. One day I was annoyed when he moves. Apostle Grace was preaching. He preached a crazy message. He, we are Christ. He went to the message, amplified, pulled out things. Whoa, guys jumped and flew. <laughs> then he said, he said, if there's any man sick in this place, come forward. I saw the guys going. I was there. I was there. Those are things that I was hurt. I was like, did these guys hear the message? This is offense. Are you getting me? A number walked forward. I was pissed. You know those? Have you ever seen Apostle Emma coming for Apostle Grace to lay a hand on him? Because have you ever seen him? You guys, this is the life of every man that dares to believe. For the Bible says God is not a respecter of persons, but any man that dares. Are you getting me? Have you ever dared to be you you any man that dares to believe? Any man that dares. Any man that dares. This is not for Pastor Zap. It's not for Apostle Grace. It's not for Apostle Emma. Oh great me. No, it's for any man that dares to believe. Any man. Any man. Because there's one man. The Bible says the man Christ Jesus. The Bible says the man Christ Jesus reconciled. Are you getting me? Do you know? Listen, there was a problem. In the Old Testament, the Bible says my ways are not your ways. That's what Isaiah said. Isaiah said, for my ways are not your ways. There was a problem, Old Testament. The ways of God were way, they were above. But the Bible says, he says there's one mediator. He says there's one mediator between God and man. One only. There's one mediator. He brought things to balance. He, he brought us to the class of God. He says one man. The Bible calls him the man Christ Jesus. Praise the Lord. He says for there's one God and one mediator between God and man. The man Christ Jesus. Praise the Lord. Next line. Next line. Who gave himself a ransom for what? For all. To be testified in due time. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Next line. Where unto I am I here? I'm ordained. You see, Paul's ordination, Paul's ordination is not based on a man of God laying a hand. Ah, Paul's ordination is because there was a man who gave him life, his life as a ransom for Paul. He says, for this man, by this reason, I am made a preacher, an apostle. Are you getting me? Man, man, when this happens, the, real, the man becomes apostle Paul. This is what makes Apostle Paul. He says, where unto I am ordained a preacher, an apostle, I speak the truth in Christ. And I lie not a teacher of the Gentiles, Gentiles in faith and victory. Listen, listen, that's who we are. Listen, I don't believe I can teach any man and he fails. There's no possible. I don't have that mind. It's not there. If you sit under me, I will teach you out, listen, I will teach you out of faith. I will take failure out of your spirit. There's this girl I led to Christ many years ago. She got married, da 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 da. 
And God used me in her life in, in, in uh, critical times. And when she gets married, after like two years, I call her just to check, hello, how are you doing? It's like, she tells me we have failed to get kids. I said, what? You have, you have what? Listen, I said, let's have tea. We had tea somewhere in Africa, I don't know, one of these places. I taught her the word for one hour. Today she has babies. Are you getting me? She could, you, that one, I did, I did, that one, that one, even though you tell her you are barren for life, she can laugh at you because I told. That, I was kind, I told. That one can teach people how to give birth. Are you getting me? I'm not supposed to listen. Listen, listen. This life, this life, tell your neighbor, this life, this life is real. It, 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 it forms my reality. You know, it, it forms your reality. It forms your realm. Your, your, your realm is because of the word. You know, the word of God starts creating a vision. That's how visions come. Visions come because of the word. When I get into the scriptures, I look at something and I say, oh my God. <laughs> I, I look at something and I say, oh my God, Pastor Zach, that's you. I hear me. I say, what? I check. That's the word of God. It's the word. Let's finish. Let's finish Romans. I, um, I want to finish Romans. Praise the Lord. It's too much. Listen, but listen. How do you... So then, brethren, we are debtors, but not to the flesh. We are not obligated to our kind of nature to live a life ruled by the standard set by the what? Set by the dictates. It means the flesh dictates your... Eh? The flesh starts dictating. You know, like those days we used to dictate. Eh? As in, after lunch, when you're tired, you've eaten more food. Whatever the teach that the guy says, you just write. Are you bored? You can write also. Are you bored? Dictates. You don't even think. You know, when the teacher would dictate, you just write. He says, hey, kid, you kid, you're not serious. You also put it there. You kid, you're not serious. That's how some men live. According to the dictates of the flesh. They live like that. They are there also, you know. Fail, you fail. Are you getting me? Get sick, you get sick. Dictates. Are you getting me? Become poorer, you become poorer. Are you getting me? That's how, listen. Listen, that's how some people live. He says, we no longer live according to the dictates of the flesh. Praise the Lord. Next slide. Give it to me in the, ampli- in the King James, this one. He says, for if you live after the flesh, you shall die. The place of death there is, is the experience where you, you, your experiences are apart from God. It means your life you get a life, you have a life which, which carries no testimony of God. Everything about you, are you getting me? We look at your life, it's not of God. The Bible says you shall die. If you live according to the flesh, the Bible says you shall what? You shall die. But if you through the spirit, ma, do modify the deeds of the body, you shall live. Give me the amplified. If through, the Bible says through the spirit. You see, listen, listen. It means through the spirit, we kill the dictates of the flesh. We mortify, we deaden. He says, for if you live according to the dictates of the flesh, you shall surely die. But if through the power of the Holy Spirit, you are habitually put into death, making extinct, deadening the evil deeds prompted by the body, you shall really and genuinely live forever. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That's why, listen, when you become, when you understand these things, spend more time in the presence of God. Spend more time in the Word. Are you getting me? Sometimes for us, sometimes when I just wake up and I just spend time in the Word and as I do my business in the day, everything is just easy. It just comes. Are you getting me? Something just comes. This guy comes. You need this. He comes. You know, that's how. That's, that's what happens. Because we spend time in the presence of God. He says, through the spirit, you deaden the dictates of the flesh. And that means a man who spends time in the presence of God deadens. He kills the activities of the flesh. Praise the Lord. He, he kills. So the other man says, the Bible says, that listen, he sent his word, okay? He sent his word. He healed. The word healing is to recover. Praise the Lord. Is to recover. Now for you, you're born again. You recover. The Bible says, and he delivered them from all their destructions. It means when the word is in your spirit, okay, the true testimony of the word of God in your spirit is you have a settled being. You're not distracted. You know, some people are too distracted to hear God. They're too distracted to meditate on the word of God. They're too distracted to hear the voice. They're too distracted. 
Why? Because they have not allowed the word of God to settle into their spirits. Praise the Lord. The Bible says receive with meekness and super. He says receive the ingrafted word. It's the ingrafted word. It's, this word is inborn. It means many men are looking outside. Are you getting me? Instead of receiving what is in them. Are you getting me? You're, listen, you are the righteousness of God. That's in you. Are you getting me? There's an imputation of righteousness in you. But you, you're looking for, listen, you're looking for approval from outside. Me, I'm right. Let me tell you, I'm right. I am right. I am, you wake up and say, I'm right. He's like, but God, I'm, I'm right. Are you getting me? I am the righteousness of God. Why? 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 Because this is what he has imputed to you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Listen, look at that scripture. It says, wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is what? Able to save your souls. Give it to me in the message version. Message version. It says, so throw, can you read, all spoiled virtue, cancerous evil in the garbage. Are you getting me? In simple humility, let our garden of God Landscape you with the word. Eh? He, he landscapes, are you getting me? With the word. He landscapes you with the word. Praise the Lord. Making a salvation garden of your life. Hey, a salvation garden. You, you, your life becomes a salvation. They pull for fruit. Are you getting me? It becomes a salvation garden. That's what the inborn word does in your spirit. It means men just come to receive fruit. You know, this week I was thinking, every day, I was from Monday, I, God was just doing something crazy. Every, I think every day I had a wonderful experience. Something nice would come my way. It, not, not these normal things, crazy things. And I think sometimes I was about to say, hey, God, is too much. Then I remembered, eh, that's carnality, are you getting me? My life, are you getting me? The Bible says he loads me with benefits, are you getting me? He loads, it means when you're born again, you're supposed to be loaded every day. He, he loads, are you getting me? He loads you with benefit. He says, blessed be the Lord. Who daily? It means it's a daily loading. It's a, ah, yeah. Your life is a daily loading of benefits. Daily. Apostle Emma, imagine daily. Daily. That's our story. Some of us are going to become boring to some people. Are you getting me? Because when you start us, are you getting me? It's a daily loading. It's a daily loading. You guys, that's your experience. Why? Because he makes, listen, the Bible says he makes your life a salvation garden. When men want fruit, they come to your garden. Are you getting me? Hey, are you getting me? Are you getting me? Before you know it, calls start increasing to your way. People start calling you because they have issues. Problems start gravitating because you have answers. We are answers to prayer. Are you getting me? We are answers to prayer. You are answers to prayer. It means, listen, the more you increase in glory, are you getting me? People come to you. Why? Because you start solving the problems of men. It can't happen. That three, no, people don't call me because I'm a pastor. Uh-uh, I don't believe that. No. They call me. Are you getting me? Because there's a certain glory about me. Are you getting me? They call me. As God starts increasing the circumference of influence and glory around your life. Listen, you start affecting the lives of men. They realize that I need to come to that man to receive my blessing. The Bible says, many times the scriptures tell us, the Bible says they besought him. They besought. You know, men would, Jesus was not telling me, you know, there are some preachers who are looking for men to heal. There are some other guys, listen, people, preachers, men are looking for, are you getting me? The Bible says they besought him if they could only touch but the hem of his garment. Hey! Are you getting me? I imagine days, listen, days have come. They cast, where does Pastor Zach's car pass? We just need to put bodies there. The car, the car, not him. We're not worthy to meet him. Are you getting me? His car where? They start telling him. Usually, he likes to come from Chisugu, Muyenga, like that. Okay, okay. Why? Listen, this is the scripture. A centurion came to my master. He said, he said, Master, you are not worthy. You are not worthy to come to my place. I can't receive you. He said, just send the word. Don't, listen, I don't, don't come, sir. I'm not ready to receive you. I'm not ready to receive that blessing. Are you getting me? I just, just send a word. My servant. A word. A word. A word. Let me tell you something. Some of you just need a word. Just one word. Like, one word like this. One word from God. One word from God. And you're fixed forever. One word. One word from God. 
He says, wherefore neither I thought I myself to come unto thee, but say in a word, and my servant shall be healed. You see, the problem we have in the body of Christ is an identity issue. It's, it's, that's why in this ministry, if you're, you're an ardent listener, you realize the focus is identity, who you are. Identity. Apostle Grace is very keen on identity. Identity. Who are you? Who are you? We, we, we saw the story of Ezekiah. Can we go to Second Kings, I think, 20? Remember, you remember the other time? That Hezekiah issue? When the word of the Lord came, that was not good for Hezekiah. That he wouldn't leave. And the man just said, as long as it's from God. But I want us to go to second. Yeah, is it 20? Yes. Okay, go, go to verse 1. No, verse 1, verse 1. There's something there about identity that I want us to see. Now listen. In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. And the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, came to him and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Next line. Then he returned his face to the wall. Then he turned. Listen, verse 1. Let's go to verse 1. I want someone to listen to this. In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. And the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, came to him and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Next line. Then he turned his face to the wall. Now the man has told, been told, you're going to die. Praise the Lord. You won't leave. The man turns himself to the wall. And prayed unto the Lord saying, I beseech thee, O Lord. I remember now how I have walked with thee in truth. Are you getting me? In, in truth. With a perfect heart. Are you getting me? It means the issue with him, Hezekiah's problem, he has been in truth. Are you getting me? How with a perfect heart. Not perfect, no deeds. No, because of a perfect heart. Listen. And have done that which is good. Because of a perfect heart. Are you getting me? I have done that which is good. Praise the Lord. In thy sight. The consciousness of Hezekiah. Listen. The consciousness of Hezekiah. And Hezekiah wept so. It means he was crying. Listen. He was, he was, he was crying. Because he carried a vindication of having a relationship with God. Where he had walked with him in truth. With a perfect heart. Before his sight. Praise the Lord. That, that was his consciousness of his relationship with God. Next line. And it came to pass of all. Isaiah was gone out into the middle court. That the word of the Lord came to him saying. Turn again and tell Ezekiah. The captain of my people. Thus saith the Lord. The God of David thy father. I have heard thy prayer. I have seen thy tears. Behold I will heal thee. On the third day thou shalt go unto the house of the Lord. But I want us to read it in the message. Go to the message. I want to show you something. No, from verse 1. Verse 1. I want to show you something. Quickly. Sometime later, Hezekiah became deathly sick. The prophet Isaiah, son of Amos, paid him a visit and said, put your affairs in order. You're about to die. You haven't long to live. Next line. Hezekiah turned from Isaiah. Yavaku Isaiah. Prophet Yadja. Naga kanku veko. Ah. He said, let me turn to God. Can't go well, that's the prophecy. Kankuveko, sir. Let me leave you. Let me turn to God. Kankuveko. You guys. You guys. There are some, pro- I have a problem. There are some men who have prophesied things. And I'm saying, is that God? He says, let me leave you. Because the, the Bible says, that saith the Lord. Kankuveko. And I look at God. Next line. Next line. Remember, oh God, who I am. Hiya. Yeah. He says, remember, oh Lord, who I am. You see. Listen to the mind of the spirit here. The man is affirming who he is. Not banana mukama kale soveza ndimufu ndi ditaka mfufu. Ah no, listen. Remember oh God who I am. He's not talking to to demons. He's talking to God. Who I am? What I have done? I lived an honest life before you. My heart's been true and steady. I live to please you. Live for your approval. And then tears flowed. I mean, I live for you, God. You know, I tell you, this, this, you guys, some people don't know how to, some people, they are crying problems, problems. Hey, how will I go out of this? How, you know, listen, listen. He says, remember God, who I am. Remember. I'm your child. I'm born of the Spirit. I'm anointed. This, I, mean, I tell, these are things I tell God. I'm anointed. 
you've, you've, I have your very life in me. Has the father has life in himself? So has he granted the son to have life in him. As in, I, I, I rehearse. That's rehearsal. Uh, listen, listen. He said, I, the prophet was, was in the middle of the court. The word came to the Lord. Because the Bible says in those days, he spoke through the prophets and the law. He said, turn back with Dayo, 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 Dayo. I have a feeling you are saying, the I didn't say that. Go back to my boy. Go back, listen. Go back, listen. We have a problem. We have guys who you prophesy and you have no word in you. It's about says prophecy is subject to the prophet. Every man prophesies according to the proportion of faith. According to the word in you, you release prophecy. Are you hearing? I don't prophesy because I saw, I saw in a, somewhere. I was dreaming. Are you getting me? I was dreaming. Then I saw there was a plane. I had a plane. Then after I got a bicycle. Papa, what is that? I said, it's very easy, son. You have the word in you. Remove the bicycle. <laughs> Remove. Remove. Ah. Remove. The realm only affirms what I have in me. It can't affirm outside. Are you getting me? Me there, I remove the bicycle. Then I find Apostle Emma. And I tell him, Sebo, Mukama Emma is between and you. I don't waste time there. Twina, Enyoni. Prophecy there has gone out. Twina, Enyoni, Sebo. Twina, Zemu, come. They were all guys. Such it again. They were all Enyoni, then Akagai. Listen, listen, listen. You are not subject to your dreams. Because you're not subject, learn to cremate your dreams. Like how you can put cream around a cake. No gamba wano njaga take our way. Now even you learn to cremate. Are you getting me? You cremate them. You change. I'm not subject to dreams. The, the reason why I don't dream stupid stuff, the devil knows me. Because he has tried it. When he tries that, I preach deeper. Are you getting me? So he knows. He doesn't waste time with me stupid things of what. Are you getting me? I don't waste time. When he brings it, I just say, well, I wake up in the morning. I said, do you think I can die? Are you mad? I've got the life of God. Listen, that's how we speak. Identity, identity, identity. Listen, everything works. Are you getting me? Identity. You see, let me tell you, child of God, you can only grow into what you are. Apostle Grace loves to say, epignosis, which is the advanced, advanced, which is truth. The advanced and complete knowledge of God. Gnosko is the progressive knowledge, growing into epignosis. How do you grow? You say, when, listen, I don't care whether you don't see the results. I don't care. The Bible says, for the word, listen, the word speaketh on this wise. Are you getting me? The Bible says, the word of God is nigh thee. Are you getting me? Listen, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, child of God. Listen, we are not subject to anything that comes outside us. The Bible says, whatsoever cometh outside of a man, the Bible says, cannot defile him. But that which comes that which you endorse. It means if a word comes to you and says you're going to die and you don't endorse. Ay, 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 I knew me, me, these things were my reasoning. I knew I was great. I knew I was different. Because even the weather opportunities come, they used to come supernatural. I never used to look for those jobs. Somehow I'll just find myself when I'm there. I'm like, oh my God. We had the craziest offices during the entire, that time. These guys came with so much money to push the telecom business. That, they were already telecom, other guys playing in telecom. So they really had to push so strong. They had to create a brand. They paid employees so much. There was a lot of extravagance. And so in Wari Telecom at that time, it was the thing to be there. People were paid three, four times what they were earning in other companies. That's how they were brought in. So I get in there, and there was this whole fuss about Wari. And I remember one time, they wanted to do a restructuring. And that day I drive my car in, I get into office, people start looking at me. Like there's a problem. Like there's a problem. I hear, listen, they were going to restructure and there were some names of guys they were firing. 
So I enter the office. And guys are looking at me. There's someone, someone fearing to tell me. Maybe like, Bambi, well, he's gone. You know what I think? You know he's gone. So I'm like, guys, what's up? What's up? They tell me, you have it hard? I'm like, your name is on the list. I said, which list? Of guys who are going. <laughs> Uh-huh. So I tell them, what, what do we do? He says, all of you, all those guys, you have to meet the CEO. I had never met him. Wonderful, British trained, Pakistani guy. I'd never even been to his level. His level sixth floor. No one just used to go there. Now it was my opportunity to meet him. Because everyone who was living, he had to speak to you. So I went with my friend. We drove to the Wari Towers. I waited. I saw guys coming out like, so the guy talks to you, what? You see guys coming with hunkies. I get him now, me, I was, I, was, I, I was already, I was still in disbelief. I didn't know what was happening. I was like, what's wrong with guys? It's my turn, I get him. I said, the guy, he already has your name, Zach? I'm like, yes, sir. <laughs> he had this beautiful accent. And it's like he has done research. He's like, you see, Zach, we have a problem. I think you've had There's a few issues and we feel that you're not doing so well. Um, actually, um, uh, uh, I was in charge of point of sale terminals. To do with, you know, point of sale terminals? Where you swipe your cards? The network, we used to provide the network. It was under me. The MD of Orient Bank, blah, 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 was traveling in London. He tried to swipe his card. Your network was off. You see, Zach, you're not managing. Zach. <laughs> I listened properly again. I said, Excuse me, sir. I said, Do you know me? I, I didn't know the guy. I'd never met him. I told him, Do you know me? I, you see, I don't want to hear. I said, so, Sir. I was very apologetic and very humble. I said, do you know me? Are you getting me? He says, excuse me? I said, do you know? I said, I'm great. I told the guy, I'm great. I'm, I'm different. I told life there. I didn't need facts. I told the guy, I'm different. He's like, are you sure? He's like, then, then, then he told me, then, then we must have a problem. Just don't worry. Zach. Don't worry, today take it as an off day. Just go back home, relax. You come back tomorrow. And, and listen, listen. When, when I went home, I didn't tell anyone what had happened. I went home, I had a blast in Bukoto. Next day, I drove my car, entered Wari. You know, guys looked at me. Everyone had gone. Everyone had gone. The guys came to me asking. On my laptop, everything was still safe. I told guys, I told him one word. I said, listen, up to this day, I don't understand it. I told him, do you know me? So later, 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 I get to hear in the ex I think he was talking to the other managers, and he says, man, there are some guys in this company who know who they are. <laughs> so my boss came, my boss came, and she said the word. <laughs> the boss said they know. Some people know who they are. I just kept quiet. Let me tell you something. You know, I realized this. What he was saying, he also never knew where he was affirming from. I brought him to life. I said, but do you know? Senses came back. Let me tell you you, that's, that's, let me tell you, let me tell you, some of you, you have not yet actually accepted, are you getting me, who you are, listen, the Bible says there were some exorcists, are you getting me, they wanted to cast the devil out, and the Bible says the devils turned to them, and they told them, hey, wait a minute, he said, Jesus we know, look at the pattern, Paul we know, Eh? It means in the realm of the spirit, there is branding. There is a brand. They say, Jesus we know. Paul we know. He says, but you. The scripture says, and one of the devils leaped on some guy and hammered him. Are you getting me? Now, the problem is the church today of Jesus Christ, many guys don't know who they are. Who, some, you know, for a minute, close your eyes and say, do you know? He said, Think, you, you, you need to, this has to become, are you getting me? Some of these things have to become your reasoning. Right? It should become your sunesis, epignosis, katalambano, whatever. Every day you look into these matters. So that, listen, when a moment appears, you don't recite. Me, I was not reciting there. I already knew. It just came out naturally. I didn't plan it. You see, what happens is that when you, you meditate upon these things, God starts creating occasion. When you arrive in the occasion, you just know how to respond. That's why we don't react. We respond. Because reaction is canon. Me, I respond. 
You see, just learn to respond to circumstances. Learn to respond to your job. Learn to respond to your neighbors. Learn to respond to your children. Learn to respond to your business. Respond to your wallet. Are you getting me? Respond. When, when, it's, when, when you see no money, don't say this. Respond. In a godly manner. Praise the Lord. Respond. Respond. Tell your neighbor, respond. 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 Let me tell you. If you understand this principle, you realize that many people have gone to the graves because they don't know who they are. Many people are broke because they don't know who they are. Many people don't know anything. Their, 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 their marriages are a mess. Their kids are messed up. They end everything because they have just... Listen. Because the mystery is this. Jesus Christ. The Bible says, in him all things consist. Are you getting me? It means when a man realizes that he is the Christ. Are you getting me? The Christ of God. Are you getting me? He says, for flesh and blood has not, listen, revealed it to you. He says, but my Father has revealed it to you. He said, the revelation of who you are. Listen, God needs to personally reveal it to you. And when He reveals it to you, those are approvals. You see, when God reveals something, that's why, he, that's why Paul says, He says, study. Study. Listen, listen, child of God, our business is to study the Word of God. That we may be approved a worker unto God. You see, listen, listen, most men, most men are not approved unto God. That's the only problem. You are not approved unto God. Most men, listen, they just say things. How, listen, why do you pass statements? There are certain things in the scriptures you can say, ah, me, I heard apostle so and so say this, prophet. You had. Have you received it for yourself? Have you, have you received it for yourself? Paul said, he says, I received this of the Lord. Are you getting me? Uh, he, Paul, Paul didn't say, here I had. He said, I, I received. Listen, Apostle Emma, Paul didn't tell us, I had. No, I was told by Peter. He said, for I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you. That the Lord Jesus, the same night, praise the Lord, in which he was betrayed. The Bible says he took bread. Now listen, child of God, if Paul received that, and for you have heard about it, there's a problem. You are just here. You, you have refused to catalambano. The guac there is paralambano. To take two. Are you getting me? You bring it home. You go away with it. You are enjoined with the truth. Paul was now telling you what he can deliver. What he's delivering unto you. He received of the Lord. He became one with it. Praise the Lord. He says, for I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was, dis- he, he was betrayed. He took bread. Next line. Next line. And when he had given thanks, the Bible says he broke it and said, take it. Listen. Paul is telling you I ate. Eh? He's not telling you that, listen, this is what he did. Ah, to the disciples. He said, when he took bread. Now he's telling you what he received. He said, when he took bread. He said, take and eat. Paul is saying, I ate. Eh? Paul is not saying, eh? some of you were like Manange, the disciples. You know, you know the story, before he died, until this is the Easter weekend, breaking bread, last supper. Are you getting me? You start last supper. Last supper, you, you talk about last supper. You talk about, eh? You, you receive. Listen, he says, and when he, get, he, when he had given thanks, he break it and said, take it. He says, this is my body. Which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Listen, bread, he now called his body. It means when he was breaking bread, he was breaking his body. The body of Christ. He broke it for them and he told them to eat, to partake. I understand why Peter says we are partakers of the divine nature. We, I understand when he says we are partakers. We are associates. We are partners of the divine life. He, I, we, listen, listen, child of God, how can you have a demon with a consciousness that you are, you are a partaker of the divine nature? He says, by this great and promises, great and precious promises, we, we are partakers of the divine nature. We, mean, we, we, we share in. We are associates of the God kind of life. We are fellows. Some people are fellows of PhD. Ah, we are fellows of the God life. You are fellows of the life of God. You eat of the life of God. It means if you eat of the life of God, you have the life of God. That's your food. Listen, it's your food. It's your food, child of God. Let's stop wasting time in gnosis. It's your food is the life. He said, take this body. He said, this is broken for you.
you. He says, do this always in remembrance of me. Praise the Lord. Which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Next line. After the same manner also, he took the cup. When he had supped, say, eh? what he sips, he also says, now you also sip. Eh, eh? You know, you know some people, we are still, we have refused to receive the word. We, we, you, listen, you have the blessed opportunity to sip of what the Lord sips. You drink, you, you drink of what he drinks. Praise the Lord. He says, this cup, he says, is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. Give it to me in the Amplified Version. Amplified Version. Ah. You know, so when, I, when I look at some of these things, I can preach for 10 hours. I, I can't stop. Life emanates. I can take it for 20 hours. When I study this, I can, I've studied this over and over. I've never gotten tired. It's too much every time. He says, similarly, when supper hours ended, he took the cup also saying, this cup is the new covenant ratified, established in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it to call me affectionately to remembrance. It means every time you drink it, you call me affectionately to remembrance. Praise the Lord. But these were figurative of the very life. The New Testament. Now listen, the new covenant which we have, which is the covenant of grace, the Bible says is ratified in my blood. It means the covenant that we have in Christ Jesus is established in the blood of Jesus Christ. It means the relationship we have with him, listen, is established in a place where there is no sin. Because the blood was for the shedding of sin. Praise the Lord, church. Now, the relationship you have with him is established hey, where there is no sin. He says, this one, you take it always. Do it in remembrance of me. Let me tell you, child of God, you become conscious that you can't sin. You become conscious that there is no error in your life. Why? Every time you take this, you come to remembrance that the covenant I have with him is established in his blood. Let me tell you, the grace of God, many people don't understand it. They don't know where it affirms from. Listen, you are at God's term. Everything about you is at his terms. That's the message of grace. It means everything he speaks to us is at his terms. When he says that you are the righteousness of God, not at your terms, at my terms. It means when I behold you, I see myself. This is me, sir. Receive it. Are you getting me? That's it. That's it. That's it. You know, most people have a problem with conscience. That's the only problem. That's why Hebrews says, he says, by the shedding of the blood of bulls and animals. Listen, he purged them. Are you getting me? He was, there was a purging. I mean, listen, they would purge, they would cut a bull. They cut a bull and a man killed yesterday. Are you getting me? A bull that dies. Are you getting me? They shed blood. And then the, when a man kills and he sees the high priest out, he says, I am not a killer. Hey, I am not. The high priest came out. Are you getting me? He said, they did this every year. It means a guy would fornicate. And the high priest comes up and he says, ay, 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 I'm okay. Let me wait for next year. Are you getting me? I still have another chance. Are you getting me? But now for us, we don't have another chance. It's sealed. He says, the covenant I have with you is established in my blood. Ratified. It means the grace of God becomes the establishment of every believer. When you wake up, you are in grace. When you go to bed, you're in grace. When you're about to think, you're in grace. The influence of God works in your life beyond reasonable doubt. Listen, that's why we preach the grace gospel. That's why the Bible says it is of faith that it might be of grace to the end that the promise might be sure to all the seed. I'm sure. I, 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 I'm sure, child of God. I'm sure. I'm sure. The covenant I have. That's why he said, when Abraham, when the Lord appears to Abraham and he says, walk he says, I am the Lord God Almighty. In Genesis 17. He says, I am the Lord God Almighty. He says, walk before me. The rendering there is walk because of me. When you become born again, you walk because of God. When you become born of the Spirit, you walk because of, the, listen, of God. He says, and when Abraham was 90 years, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said, unto him, I am the Almighty God. Walk before me, which is walk because of me. The true Hebrew rendering. And thou be, be thou, Perfect. It means when a man walks because of God, perfection starts happening in his life. Perfection. Perfection. That's why now we can, the Bible says now we speak of the words that become sound doctrine. 
It means everything that comes out of me is sound. I, uh, there's doctrine in you. Why? Because you walk, because it means everything that comes out of you is perfected by God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now look at Abraham there. Hey, I'm about to close. Time. I'm about to close. Look at Abraham. And when Abraham, 19 years old, appeared unto Abraham and said unto him, I am the almighty God, walk before me and be thou perfect. Next line. And I will make my covenant between me and you. Now listen, listen, listen. We need to underline the word. The covenant is his. <laughs> and I will make mine. It's not a covenant between us. At, at, we can agree. Ah, this is my covenant between me and you. I am saying you are perfect. <laughs> ah, this one is not... We don't, I don't want you to reason with me. Ah, first receive this covenant. Then you, we are able to reason. You see, the place of reasoning with God, you have to first come hither. You, 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 come, you first come to the God level, then you reason with Him. Okay? I will make my covenant between me and thee, and I will multiply thee exceedingly. Praise the Lord. And Abram fell on his face. Now listen. Listen. Listen, child of God. When the Lord spoke that, the Bible is very clear. Abram fell. The assumed man. Abram is assumed father. The Bible says he fell. That one fell. That, the guy who was always trying to be a father. Assumed to be. The Bible says that one fell. His business was over. He fell. Are you getting me? I, I, I just see the Lord. The Lord says, my covenant is between me and you. The scriptures tell us, Abram. The, 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 one who is to, the one who wanted to be a father of many nations and he could not be. That one fell. The Bible says he fell. He bowed. Abraham fell on his face and God talked with him saying, he fell down flat. He no longer had business. It was no longer his business. Now it was God's business. Time. He fell on his face. Next line. As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee and thou shalt be a father. Listen how he received. He fell and God began speaking. He says, as for me, behold, see, my covenant is with you and thou shalt be a father of many nations. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abraham. Are you hearing me? But thy name shall be Abraham, for a father of many nations have I made thee. You see, I have made you. Don't try to become. Now me, I have made you a father of many nations. Are you getting me? Next line. And I will make thee exceedingly fruitful. Praise the Lord. And I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee. Praise the Lord. And I will establish. I hear it. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed after thee in their generations. In their generations. For an everlasting covenant. To be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee. Let me tell you. This, you, you, you now have become a consequence. That's why the Bible now calls us the fruits of redemption. We are an effect. Of the covenant. He, he made a covenant with our father Abraham. That we, you shall have. Apostle Grace. Pastor Zach. Are you getting me? Apostle Emma. Put your name please. please put your name. Put your name. Put your name. In, in generations to come. Are you getting me? Put your name. Put your name. Put your name. Generations for an everlasting covenant. To be a God unto thee. And to thy seed after thee. Next line. And I will give unto thee, to thy seed after thee, the land wherein thou art a stranger, all the land of Canaan, for an everlasting possession. And I will be their God. Next line. And God said unto Abraham, Thou wilt keep my covenant, therefore thou and thy seed after in their generations. Listen, child of God. When the Bible starts saying, He says, Look unto your father Abraham. He starts saying, look unto... He said, don't waste our time. Don't tell me your nonsense. Are you getting it? Just look. Just look. Don't, don't, don't waste our time. Look unto our father. Your father Abraham and your mother Sarah. The Bible says, who bore you? You came out of them. Are you getting me? They bore you. He says, for I called Abraham alone. Amplified says, didn't say I blessed him. He says, I blessed him and I made him many. Look at Amplified. 
Amplified. Give me amplified. And look unto Abraham your father and to Sarah who bore you. For I called him when he was but one. I blessed him and I made him many. Listen, listen. God called your father. Then he put a blessing, an anointing on him. Then he multiplied him. Now, for you, you, you but, but God, my issue. Yeah, look, look unto Abraham. Are you getting me? The word there is to look unto, is to look according. It means you, you have to get the eyes of Abraham. You have to receive. Are you getting me? To receive. To look through Abraham. That's why he said, in thy seed, in thy seed, Abraham, and I shall bless all the nations of the world. Are you getting me? In thy seed, which is Christ. Praise the Lord. It means, listen, our blessing, are you getting me? It's not because a man of God laid a hand on you. That's wonderful. We can impart and affirm. Are you getting me? Our blessing, are you getting me, is long, long, long ago predestinated. Are you getting me? Before you were born. That's why the Bible says we are elect according to the foreknowledge of God. To the foreknowledge of God. I just need to call one man. I just need one man. I want Abraham. I'll call one man. I'll bless him and I'll multiply them. So that those those men won't have an issue. They'll be born blessed. Are you hearing me? They'll be born blessed. That's why in this ministry we preach the grace gospel. We preach the grace gospel. That's all there is. That's all there is, child of God. That's all there is. Now listen. Listen. The Bible says, He says, Blessed, blessed are they which are pure in heart. The Bible says, For they shall see God. They shall see God. I like the word rendering there for pure. Pure. The, the, it, it, it renders, the, 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 the Greek says, pure is, they are, they, 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 they are free from the desire to sin. Eh? The, the, I like the word pure there. The, blessed are they which are pure in heart. You mean they are free from the desire of sin and guilt. They are free. It means when a man is pure in heart, he's free from the desire. Now, when a man is free from the desire of sin, error, and guilt, the Bible is very clear. It doesn't say he might. There's a full colon there. He says, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. When Zacchaeus, the Bible tells us in, I think, Luke 19. Luke 19. Many people don't, don't understand the story of Zacchaeus. They say, he a tax collector. The Lord was not fair. He's not fair. Are you getting me? He's not fair. He's a short rich man. He had cheated men. Why did he see them? There's nothing in the scriptures that does not reveal a pattern unto us. There's nothing. He says, and behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief among the publicans, and he was rich. Next line. The Bible says he sought to see Jesus. Listen, this guy desired to see the Lord. That's all. Who he was. And could not for the press, because he was of little stature. Next line. And he ran before and climbed down to a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must abide at thy house. And he made haste and came down and received him joyfully, praise the Lord. And when he saw it was all, it, and, and, and they saw it, they all murmured, saying, that he was going to be the guest with a man that is a sinner. Praise the Lord. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord. The, he said, Behold. Listen. Now Jesus is in Zacchaeus' house. Zacchaeus all of a sudden. He said it. The Lord didn't ask him. He says, Behold, Lord. The half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man. By false accusation. I restore him what? I restore him to what? Fourfold. Next line. And Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation come to this house, for as much as he also is the son of... Hey, 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 he is also, as much as he is the son of Abraham. Praise the Lord. Next line. For the son of man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. Now, help me understand something about predestination. He's saving that which was lost. It means at one point it was his. The foreknowledge of God. Why would he save a lost? It means he owned it. 
He says, elect according to the foreknowledge of God. Through the sanctification of the Spirit. You see, the true definition of being lost defines that actually, originally, you are His. Oh, I'm, I'm lost. You are His. It just means that. You are lost from who? From Him. You are His. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And the beautiful thing about the word Zacchaeus, in the Hebrew rendering for Zacchaeus, is the very word Zakai, which means pure. The word, listen, the word Zacchaeus, in the Hebrew rendering, and even in the third definition, means pure. It means a man pure of heart, so to see Jesus. Don't worry about the cheating and all that nonsense. Huh, me, I just want him. Are you getting me? He just desired to see Jesus. And the Bible now tells you, he says, blessed are they which are pure in heart. He says, for they shall see the Lord. And I love the scriptures, and I love the word, because the word sight there, it also has a beautiful rendering for seeing God. It's not just to see God. You know, like people say, oh, God is everywhere. Look at the tree now. Are you saying that's God? Are you getting me? Ah, uh-uh. ah, uh-uh. It's. I love the beautiful part here. If you study in the Greek later, it's, it's, it's a place where God allows you to see him. He, 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 because you're pure in heart, he, 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 God causes a seeing him which is remarkable. You start seeing God in dimensions. Are you getting me? That, that, that you can't just say there's a tree there. You say, oh my God. Are you getting me? A revelation starts hitting you. Before you know it, you're in your room and then you just see God. I was there. You're there. Everything, God starts allowing himself to be revealed to you. So listen, when the Bible starts saying, blessed is the man that is pure in heart. A man who is free. Listen, you're free, child of God, from the desire of sin and guilt. Once a man comes to that place where he's free from the desire of sin and guilt, the Bible calls it blessed. And I love the word. The Bible says the word of God is a cleanser. He says you're clean through the word. It means when the word of God starts washing your spirit, are you getting me? It starts causing an ability to see God as he is. God starts allowing himself to reveal himself to you. Are you getting me? Many people cannot see God because they, they are not. That's why the Bible says, he said, if it be possible, be peaceable with all men. The Bible says, listen, do not allow corrupt communication to depart forth from thy mouth. But that which is good to the edifying. Are you getting me? And the Bible says, and that the Holy Spirit may not be gripped. Many people have gripped this Holy Spirit. Why? Because they speak corrupt words. Corruption. Listen, corruption. God, I don't know what I'm going to do. I, you know, you know, that's corruption. Don't, please don't allow. You grieve the Holy Ghost. You're born of the Spirit. Come, you're born of the Spirit, child of God. I want to speak to you right now. Listen. Listen, the Bible says blessed. You're, you're, you're a blessed man. Blessed is he that is pure. You see, the experience of, of seeing God is simple. The moment God starts by his word, are you getting me? He imputes righteousness in your spirit. When righteousness is imputed in your spirit, listen, you're free from the desire. <laughs> you see, it's not just free from sin and, and guilt. You're, you're free from the desire. <laughs> it means God kills. You see, what is in men is the, the problem is the desire to error. They, they, they think to be human is normal. Ah, that God kills that desire right now in the name of Jesus by the word of God. The Bible says, for we do mortify. Right? The Bible says, through the Spirit, we do mortify the deeds of the flesh. It means through the Holy Ghost. Are you getting me? God starts killing everything that is flesh in your life. He starts breaking. Are you, are you getting me? God starts breaking you. That's why in the scriptures, when the Bible says when they were at table, when they were breaking bread and meat, the Bible says he disappeared. Are you getting me? It means his body became so broken that he disappeared. But the Bible tells us, and they knew him. It means he disappeared in the physical realm. But they had the conviction that now we know him. Listen, that's our relationship with God. That's our relationship with God. I want to speak to you right now. Just lift up your hands right now. Listen, the word of God has come to your spirit right now. I declare forth, saith the Lord, that the word of God cleanses. You're clean through the word of God. It means before God, are you getting me? Before God, God is free to reveal himself to you. There are people this day, God is going to reveal himself to you in ways, in ways that no man can. In ways and forms. Let me tell you, that purity in heart... God, in, listen, by the spirit and the unction of the Holy Ghost, listen, from this day forth, God cleanses your hearts that you might see him as he is. 
For the Bible says, as he is, so are we in this world. Listen, that can only be done by the Spirit of God. And the Spirit of God right now is at work in this place. He's at work in this place. He's moving. Are you getting me? The Bible says he attends to his word. He, he attends to the word. Let me tell you, God attends to the word. He attends to the word. God attends to the word of God in your life. He attends to his word in your life. His word is your business. Listen, his word about your marriage is his business. His word about your finances is his business. His word about your health is his business. His word about your ministry is his business. His word about your future. <laughs> God is in this place. God is in this place. God in this place. God and just speak to just speak to him right now. Just receive. Receive that engrafted word, that inborn. That which I communicate right now is in your spirit right now. I communicate that which is of the spirit. I release this and what God embedded in your spirit. Come on, just speak in other tongues and receive the word of God right now. Receive it, receive. Receive the word of God now in your spirit. Listen, every man under my voice. Listen, you are under grace in the name of Jesus Christ. Sin shall no longer have dominion under you. For God kills that desire. Ay, 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 ay. God kills that desire in you. God kills that desire in you. That desire. That desire to sin. That desire of guilt is there. Some of you are going to wake up and you just can't fail. You can't fail anymore. You're going to wake up and your life is so, so successful. And you don't know why, but you just can't help it. Some of you are going to wake up and you're so anointed. You just wake up and you're so anointed. Some of you are going to wake up, listen, and the presence of God surrounds you. Some of you are going to wake up and you're, the Bible says you're surrounded with the shoulders of favor. Come on, receive the word. Ancient words. Ancient words. your hands. I want to speak a blessing. Listen, if you're sick in this place, receive your healing right now. The presence and the power of God is in this place. Beyond reasonable doubt, beyond what you even can imagine. But I want to speak right now because of the word that has just come out. Because of the word. Now listen, because of the word of God, you are not a human being. (laughs) Because of the word, You are a spirit being. Listen, the Holy Spirit breaks your physical body. Are you getting me? He breaks your physical body. He he kills and deadens the flesh in your life. 
He killed everything that is physical. Are you getting me? Everything that stumbles you from experiencing Him dies right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Everything, everything, everything in your life by the word, by the word of God is dead. Everything that is so physical, that is carnal, listen, the, the Spirit of God purges it right now. Right now, right now, any demon under my voice is out in the name of Jesus Christ. Any ignorance right now in the name of Jesus, knowledge fills that place, oh God. Any instability right now is filled by stability right now. Any inadequacy is filled with His fullness right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Receive it. Come on, receive that blessing. Receive that blessing. Receive it. Receive it. As Paul received, receive it. Listen. The Bible says, do this always in remembrance of me. Do this in remembrance of me. Do this in remembrance of me. Now listen. Listen. Paul says, whoever eateth and and, and eateth unworthily, the Bible says, he brings damnation unto himself. When Paul says that, what he's trying to say, he's not saying you're unworthy, because he would have said whoever is unworthy. He's not communicating to the person. He's communicating to the manner in which you partake of these things. The consciousness, the consciousness that you partake of the divine life. The consciousness that he's your bread. The consciousness, the Bible says that I am the bread which comes from heaven. That gives life unto the world. Are you getting me? That's what you partake of. That's why by that understanding you can, you can say confidently that I have the life of God. I carry the body which is of Christ Jesus. Praise the Lord. I want to listen. I want to just listen, help you understand that from this day forth. You can be confident to say those things and affirm them to be true in your life. That from this day forth, you're not just a human being. You can be in Brazil right now in the name of Jesus. You can be anywhere in this world. Why? Because you're not limited by physical circumstances. For the Spirit of God in you is alive. That Spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives on the inside. It dwells. The Bible says it dwells there. It's at peace. Praise the Lord. Listen, by that message right now, I want to give an opportunity. To any man that has not never received Jesus Christ. By the gospel we preach here. Listen. I welcome you right now to walk in this front. Are you getting me? And receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Please just hold on for a few minutes. This is very important. Hold on for a few minutes. We have a whole weekend to go. We have more than enough time. Please allow those ones that want to give their lives to Christ. That want to receive Jesus Christ to just walk forward. Come on, clap for them. Come on. Just give us this time, please. Come on, clap to the Lord. There's a bash right now in heaven.
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You see, when I look at you, I see sh- spirits. Are you hearing me? Sons of God. You, you are born in this gospel. Right now, you're going to say these words after me. Just by faith. You receive Jesus Christ. Just by faith. If you believe in your heart. Just say these words after me. Say, Lord Jesus. I confess you, Lord, of my life. I believe in my heart that God raised Jesus Christ. This day I am saved. This day I am totally delivered. This day I am totally free. I am a son of God. I am born of the Spirit. I am Spirit. I am the Word of God. In Jesus' mighty name. The message you have just heard was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 41 466 or email us at fenerocompala at gmail.com You can also find us on the web at www.fenero.org Or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowships at Uma Multipurpose Hall from 5pm to 8pm You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero Fenero, make manifest